The All Progressives Congress now has a new chairman, Abdullahi Ganduje, and former Senate spokesman, Ajibola Bashiru, is now national secretary of the ruling party. They both emerged at the National Executive Committee meeting of the party today uh, on the 66th day of President Bola Tinubu's administration. We're monitoring developments closely in his first 100 days in office. I am Nifemi Oguntoye. Thank you for joining us on the program. You can share your comments on Twitter or is it X, using the hashtag first 100 days. Remember to tag at TVC News NG and at Nifemi Oguntoye. Well, the new national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Abdullahi Ganduje, says internal de democracy would prevail in the party during his tenure. He also promised to hit the ground running to ensure victory for the party in all forthcoming governorship elections across the country. The meeting was attended by President Bola Tinubu, Vice President Kashim Shetima, governors of the All Progressives Congress, as well as chieftains of the party. In his address at the NEC meeting, President Tinubu says he will continue with efforts to deliver the promises of good governance to Nigerian people. The president, however, insists the 2023 election was the best in Nigeria's history. It is as a responsibility to promote unity, stability, and love among the Nigerians. And we must deliver on our promises. And perhaps before you, the renewed hope to fulfill your duties and the duties of our family fathers. To be sure that the Nigeria remains the focal point of our foreign and domestic policy. Also, President Bola Tinubu has constituted a delegation that will go to Niger to further hold talks with the coup plotters and further pressure them into reinstating the democratically elected government of Mohamed Bazoum as president of the country. This is coming about 48 hours to the... Delegates on their way to Niger in a last-minute effort to convince the junta to change their mind and restore the democratically elected government. Let's speak with our State House correspondent who joins me live from the presidential villa. Femi, the ECOWAS defense chiefs met in Abuja yesterday. Is it clear what their resolution is after the expiration of this ultimatum? Hi, Femi. It is not clear what um, their resolution is, but one thing we know is that they are meeting so that they can put a force on standby if it comes to the last resort, which is uh, the use of force in the Nigerian Republic, then it will be easy for them to deploy troops, either boots on the ground or however they intend to deploy troops to the Nigerian Republic to tackle uh, the coup plotters, force them out of government and reinstate the democratically elected government of uh, Mohamed Bazoum in Nigeria Republic. We, it's just for them to ensure that they are on standby. And uh, that uh, meeting they had yesterday, uh, well, it, had, it was attended by the defense chiefs of all West African countries, with the exception of Burkina Faso and Mali. We know that um, these two countries, uh, the democratic government in that country was also toppled uh, by uh, military coup plotters. So, so far they have been able to rally around uh, the forces within the West African region, within ECOWAS, um, president of uh, Nigeria Republic. But what they are trying to do now is to explore the diplomatic option. President Bola Tinubu is juggling many balls in the air at the same time, while the use of force, the military action is on the table. He is also sending uh, different envoys, one by uh, General Abdesalami Abubakar and Algeria and Libya to their side and also, uh, you know, th that uh, important um, Maghreb region to ensure that, well, those ones ramp up security around there and also prevent um, the coup plotters from using um, those borders uh, to, to transport arms or just um, ensure that um, they re perpetually remain in government. Nifemi. The House correspondent Femi Akode live for us at the presidential villa. Good to see you, Femi. The question continues about whether or not cost and benefits analysis have been done by the Nigerian authorities for, you know, the short, medium and long term implication, especially under the current financial problems 
Nigeria is facing. There's also the refusal to reimburse Nigeria's efforts in Syria Leone and Liberia in the past. Will Nigeria be able to fund a possible war with the Nigerian Republic as others in ECOWAS, you know, Kajoha to lead and as usual carry most, if not all, of the yoke? Those are the questions we'll be asking in the coming days. Let's get back to our coverage of what's happening within the ruling All Progressives Congress, where the party now has a new chairman and national secretary. Abida Lawa has been covering that story since morning. She joins me now live from Abuja. Talk us through the replacement process and the other offices to be filled within the APC, Habida. All right, earlier today, the National Executive uh, Committee of the APC met with the President and Vice President in attendance, and of course, um, a new National Chairman emerged in the person of the former Kano State Governor, Abdullahi Ganduje, who is saying that according uh, uh, to a submission today that internal democracy will prevail in the party during its tenure. Recall that the former national chairman and secretary also resigned their position. Habida is back now. Habida, you mentioned earlier that NEC members were in disagreement with the amendments of the agenda. What really happened and how was that resolved earlier today? We'll sure get back to our bidder when we can lay our hands on her, but let's um, take a short break. When we return, we'll explore the new 19 member list of Mr. President's ministerial nominees. Stay with us. Now, attention to what's happening at the Red Chamber of the Senate, where additional list has been read as submitted by the Chief of Staff to President Bola Tinubu, who has now constituted uh, uh, what appears um, a 47 member list of the forthcoming cabinet under his administration. Interesting names here indeed. 28 has been screened by the Red Chamber. Another list of 19 sent by the President to the Senate. And the screening we understand is to begin on Friday. The list comprises of five former governors, two female nominees, making nine female ministers designate appointed by President Bola Tinubu. And that's the figure you have on the screen. 28 have been screened, 19 yet to be screened. Uh, we have 19.1% of this list being women and, of course, nine former governors. Let's take a look at a few of them. 68-year-old Adego Egao Yetola was former governor of Oshun State between 2018 and 2022. He lost a second-term bid to PDP's Ademola Adeleke. Simon Lalong is 60 years old, former governor of Plateau State, who was director general presidential campaign uh, uh, for the 2023 uh, APC campaign organization. Like former governor Oyetola, the APC lost to the PDP in the last election in the state. Belo Matawale is 54 years old, the fifth governor of Zamfara State. He lost a second term bid as well earlier this year to PDP's Dauda Lawal. There's Tuji Alausa, executive chairman, chief medical officer at Dialysis Care Center, Kidney Care Center, and he's also been touted as someone who's coming on board with a lot of the experience in that regard. Let's get the conversation going on. I'm joined now by um, Victor High, who is the, he has just been re-elected as president of Directors Guild of Nigeria. He was presidential candidate of the Providence People's Party in 2019. APC Chairman UK Chapter Today Doherty also joins this conversation. Gentlemen, good evening and thank you for joining us. Let's kick started. Uh, Mr. High. they say that um, President Tunubu now has the record for the highest number of ministerial nominees in Nigeria's Fourth Republic. The past president had 43, you know, in 2019. In 2015, President Jonathan nominated 33, including nine from the Yaradu administration. Obasan just started out with 40 before, you know, reviewing it downwards. Fast forward to 2023, we have 47 ministerial nominees. What do you make of the increment in numbers? See, I, I'm a little worried, and I'll tell you why. Um, apart from ministerial appointments for uh, boards, uh, you know, parastatals and all that, CEOs of parastatals and all that, the president has over 6,000 appointments to make. Mm. So, I mean, there's still enough. This is 6,000. Yes, yes, mm. yes, 6,000. I know that for sure. I knew that from mm. before now. 
that, I mean, these are appointments that can be made across the board. So there's enough. Not to talk about ambassadorial mm. appointments and all that. What it does appear to me is like, I don't know. Quite frankly, the new list does contain some highly celebrated people. Uh, I can see technocrats, you know, amongst, even among the governors, I see people with some very sound backgrounds, which is, I mean, that's something that's good at identifying talents and all that, which is okay. But I think the number is a bit unwieldy. I don't know if you're going to create, even if you're going to do minister and um, what do you call it now? Uh, We're hearing that there's possibly the, the possibility of creating new ministries, uh, breaking some down into more specific I'm just areas. wondering why. You know, um, the cost of governance is just going, to, just going to bloat. I don't know, maybe they'll just spread them, share them among that. But the truth is, as you create new ministries, they need new offices, mm. they need new cars. So if you are going to get cars for 16 ministers, you're going to be getting cars for 47 ministers, and all of that. So, uh, and of course, they'll be getting orderlies who will be working along with them, which will be further depleting. Uh, the people who are available to do other normal place work and all that. But he may have his reasons. Maybe we shouldn't get yes. cars for them this time. Yes. So let's, <laughs> <laughs> let's bring in to the Doherty, APC Chairman, UK Chapter. Mr. Doherty, thank you for joining us on the program. So about nine former governors and a significant number of senators and members of House of Reps made this list. Uh, talk to us about, um, of course, former governors, by virtue of their experience, they are supposed to be a good fit, right? But what do you think is responsible for the mixed reactions, you know, that is greeting this development? Uh, thank you very much, Tiffany, for having me once again. Uh, uh, let's give it to, to the president, Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tinumbu, uh, for living up to his promises about uh, uh, setting up uh, ministers with competencies, national competencies. Mm -hmm. And we have seen that in the, mm -hmm. even in these new 19 nominees. It cuts across uh, all facets of uh, our, 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 our everyday life in Nigeria, be it the political aspect of it, be it uh, uh, political parties in it, be it gender, youth, and uh, what have you. Uh, the, the thing is that uh, Nigeria, we need to, we, the renewed hope agenda is a very voluminous, very uh, strategic uh, mm -hmm. the delivery that Nigeria mm -hmm. is expecting. And you need, uh, you need every, all hands on deck for the implementation of this, uh, of this uh, uh, hope. And uh, those that the, uh, uh, the president has nominated are, one, when we talk about the governors that made the uh, ministerial nominee, mark you, before they become governors, they were, one way or the other, very successful individual in their various uh, in their various endeavors. Also, they have been part of, they have been in in politics to understand uh, the the need and the need of Nigerian date. So also, we have the younger ones that are in that uh, list who needed uh, who needed uh, we say a kind of a guidance or, or mentorship, even though they are. Uh, technocrats in their own uh, rights, and they are highly, uh, highly, 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 highly learned. Uh, do you see the mix of the 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 the, 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 the nominees that have been there for a long time, who, have, right. been, who have been lawyer, mm. party men, been lawyer to the cause of putting Nigeria in the front burner? So I see that uh, the president has, is, is fulfilled, uh, is, uh, is given to Nigeria about the competencies in terms of his ministerial nominees, and we, 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 are, we, are, we, are, we are assured all right. that uh, the implementation of mm. all the agenda set out in the new hope is ready for implementation. All right. I'm talking about being optimistic. It's just a matter of time to see you know, how well that we uh, fit into this forthcoming position. But I can see you making some lists, uh, Mr. High. Uh, <laughs> what names stood out for you? Because we have a very short time. Okay. Um, quite a few. I'm impressed that uh, Boston, mm. Tijani made the list, um, the CEO of CC Hub. So I can see some intentionality in the area of um, uh, technology, IT, Indeed. there, you know, and innovation. I see that happening and it's uh, also 46 years old yes yes about 1977 mm. um then um i see along along with him as well i think is it lola or so what's her name now mm. i see two people there who will be fit for uh, well this is just me talking the president has his own mm. this is for okay lola Dejon. yes from Lagos. i think both of them will be very good fit for mm. 
uh, for if like if there's a Ministry of Technology or whatever, because Zola comes from banking. She has an IT background, has plenty of experience mm. in the area of uh, integration. Yes, technology. exactly. Mm. So, so I see that a lot, and uh, you know. We begin to see people like uh, Tijani Maman, uh, SAM, Professor of Law, former DG of uh, um, Nigerian Law School. So you can see that he's bringing cream, the cream of the various uh, professionals. There's quite a lot. Uh, Miriam Shetty, she's a physiotherapist from Kano, and she has plenty of experience. So in the area of sports, sports uh, physiotherapy, I mean, she, she was part of the London um, Olympic uh, team and uh, you know they uh, that that treated a lot of people including the same boat and the rest so you can see like i say a bit of intentionality in the choice of of people and if you go to look at some of the former uh, governors they have there are people who like he rightly pointed out have um, have come with a lot of pedigree mm. you know so if you take away their governorship on their own merit they as well, uh, but you uh, can bet that about. if two of them had won their rerun election, they wouldn't be on this list. So there's also the political, you know, calculation that m <laughs> fits them perfectly into no, this list. No, I understand. My worry is that the number is wieldy. I, I, you know, that's that to me. You know, it's like attempting to please everyone, yeah. which I think is totally unnecessary. Some of them will do very well, manning some parastatals, not necessarily the ministries. Because if you have them at the ministries, the parastatals, like what happened in the last, permit me to say, in the last administration where the film industry, for instance, you had a medical doctor as uh, the director of uh, the Nigerian Film Corporation. Well, he's managed to fit in and all that. But I mean, if, if, I mean, if, you, if you want to work with professionals, work with professionals along right. the line. You know, not... So that's my that's that's Mr. Doherty, we have just about one more minute to go of the show. There are about nine former governors on this list. What's the you know peculiarity of having a former governor handle a ministry when you consider the fact that they need now to work, you know, with other individuals, even amongst themselves in the cabinet? What are your concerns in this regard? Uh, I don't really have uh, much concerns about that because the governors are well, uh, I believe they are well experienced and they have managed a vast majority of individuals in, in, in various endeavors. And I believe they are, going to be, they are going to bring to the fore those experiences in, uh, in, in whichever portfolio they find themselves. And there will be a kind of guidance to others too, because most of them, yeah, they have run they have managed states, they have managed resources, they have managed... Uh, in addition to uh, that, there are also political leaders in their state. Yeah, and they are, yes, there are political <laughs> leaders in their state. So they are coming with a lot of political baggage as well. Do you agree? Uh, yes, a lot of political baggage, but definitely they, 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 they know and they have managed such baggages while they were governors. And I believe that uh, those uh, structures that they have been using to do that are still very much there in their state. And therefore, it wouldn't be of any concern to uh, the portfolio that they are in right. because they are state, some of them still have their state intact within the, which, uh, with APC and some that has lost their state definitely would uh, have uh, a, way to, uh, a, a way to manage whatever baggage uh, we're looking or we're talking about here. All right. But be, be, they are very important in this, uh, in, in this administration. We're counting, we're counting on that, Mr. Doherty, but I'm afraid we have to go now. APC Chairman, UK Chapter, Tunde Doherty, uh, thank you for joining us. Victor High, who was presidential candidate of the Providence People's Party in 2019, has just been re-elected president of the Directors, um, remind me now, Guild of, Nigeria. Guild of Nigeria. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on the program. It's good to see you thank and you. talk to you on TV again. It's been a <laughs> long time. Yes. All right, maybe tomorrow we'll look at um, the women participation on that is administration. We understand that women have occupied only 13.73% of ministerial positions since 1999, according to the National Bureau of Statistics. President Buhari had seven out of 43, uh, making 16%. Now we have nine out of 47. That's just about 19%. We couldn't make the 35% affirmative action again this year, particularly within the cabinet. But according to Mr. Ohai, there are 6,000 other you know, appointments that the president will have to make. We'll follow that very closely as well. But that's our program for this hour. You can watch a repeat broadcast at midnight and at 6 a.m. tomorrow. I am Nifemi Ogutoyo, and I'm back at the top of the hour with more. Stay with us.